In August 1990, I did the Coast to Coast walk, finishing one week before I got married. 30 years on, my wife Judith and I decided we'd do it as a 30th anniversary celebration. This video highlights some of our experiences on the way, from sun-kissed vistas to driving rain, over mountains and moorland and through valleys and by rivers, from coast to coast. It tells our story and our journey. Day three then. So today uh, we've two passes to go over. We've got to go over uh, green up edge first of all and then drop down towards Grasmere and then from there it's um, up and over past Grisdale, turn over the Grisdale Pass and then down to Patterdale. Uh, so first bit of today, whoops, is a is a steady climb up over Greener Page. Last night was a pretty decent night. There was some rain in the night, some showers on and off. Uh, but I think we both slept well. So yeah, rare, raring to go on day three. So heading up here on the path uh, past Lining Crag, it's quite a steep one. It's actually been made out of blocks that they've put in. Uh, so I guess man-made if you like. Uh, but I mean, interestingly, last time I did the Coast to Coast 30 years ago, this was just a quite a big scar actually, uh, that was visible from you know, quite a long way below. I remember at the time there was a debate going on about whether or not you know we should be fixing the paths. Some people were worried that you know that it would detract from the kind of I don't know naturalness if you like of the of the trails. But actually I think they've been an absolutely brilliant thing. I think they really reduced the scarring on some hillsides, made it easier for walkers. And, yeah, they're a real tribute, I think, to the people who've made them. So we're crossing Greener Page. The rain's on. So it's full waterproofs. And I think we're in for this for, a, for maybe a few hours, unfortunately. But hey, I've got to take the rough with this mouth. So just looking back up to the top of green up here through the mist and rain. So now heading down to towards Grasmere. Hoping those are going to improve a little bit soon, but don't know, looking a bit dodgy. So somewhere there is Grisdale Tarn. Oh, uh, we've arrived down in Grisdale, left the blustery low cloud. Um, and strong winds up at the top, so it feels a bit more tranquil. It's still drizzling, uh, but it does feel a lot calmer and quieter down here. So, 
bit of a stroll now um, into Patterdale and then we'll see what's what there, whether we'll camp at the campsite there, then we need to wait and see what's going to happen. So tonight's offering, Julius had a three star meal tonight, three star, <laughs> three course meal tonight. Tomato cup of soup to start off with, eh? And now, what's that cheese and broccoli pasta with, oh. with tuna? Better than a Michelin star restaurant. Oh, I think that's pushing it a bit. <laughs> so I've got my tea cooking here, but outside the weather is, it's still pretty grim. That's the kind of misty picture outside the tent. We were quite fortunate that, um, that in the last sort of half hour just before we we pitched up, um, we had a, a sort of dry section, so it did dry a little bit of stuff out, um, which we're quite fortunate with, but overall today though, it's been a pretty wet affair. Um, and we found out that the campsite at, si at, at Side Farm at Patterdale was still closed due to COVID-19, so We've wild camped again, we're up at Bordale Halls, which is a nice little site. Um, a little bit exposed, but yeah, pretty decent site. So the morning of day four. Um, you may be able to hear it's absolutely chucking it down. Um, it's chucked it down most of the night. Um, and it's carried on this morning. So we've had breakfast here at Bordale Halls. Um, and well, I think we're gonna just wait and see what's gonna happen over the next hour or so. There's no point in really setting up on this unless we have to. So we're gonna sit it out for a little bit and see if the rain uh, passes, fingers crossed. So until then, um, probably just get packed up in here, might have another brew, chill out for a bit. Tent time. So we're just about to break camp. This is our um, pitch for the night. Did pretty well really, but you see a pretty grey day. But we're gonna get cracking. It's getting on for nine o'clock, so time to get moving. So we've just come along this path and suddenly the cloud has just lifted enough to, for us to get a view of Angle Town. It's very nice of it. I don't think it's going to last too long though. There's another roll of cloud coming in. Here we go, rain's on again. So this is us on the top of Kitsy Pike. Blowing an absolute hoolie, eh? we're in a little bit of a shelter at the minute. But yeah, I think we're glad to get to the top. <laughs> the only way now is down. It's got to get better. It's got to get better. We've got a first view of Hall's water and we're out of the rain. So we've got another we've got another lunch spot here uh, by a waterfall. Sort of shelter, shelter under a tree because it's still still drizzling, but it's actually quite a lot warmer, isn't it? It feels quite warm. Well, relatively warm. <laughs> yeah, just about relatively warm. Uh, but a pretty pretty steep descent that of Kitsy Pike. But yeah, glad to be down. It was pretty miserable up there on the top. We've arrived at the Forces, um, which are a series of cascades. So the path crosses that. And alleluia, it stopped raining. I've actually taken the waterproof trousers off. Just on a nice little section here after burn banks. Really pleasant wandering by this river.
Oh, it's just amazing. Amazing how quickly you go from, you know, sort of a fells and open country to pastoral land. Anyway, it's nice for a change. They say the sun's about to come out. What could be better? So a nice little walk back to Shep now, I think. Last hour or so. So we're just approaching Shep Abbey. Don't know what to say about it, really. I suppose it's in its heyday, it was probably quite something. But now, well, you know, like so many monasteries, a little bit dilapidated. So we finally made it into Chap, into Chap, Chap, Chap. It's kind of the first third done, and tonight we are the three nights while camping. We're treating ourselves, we're having a bed and breakfast. So, shower time, wash, dry. Ah, can't wait. So, day five, uh, we've just left Shap. We had a cracking night stay at the New Ings Lodge so it was a little bit of luxury we had fish and chips for tea a long hot shower washed a few clothes but it was a great little place to stop fully recommend it nice breakfast this morning and so we're kind of well I won't say raring to go but yeah we certainly feel refreshed. refreshed refreshed there we go I'm looking forward to today which takes us over a limestone pavement towards Kirby Stephen I'm actually looking forward to today uh, because quite a bit of the coast coast I've kind of done over the intervening years again but this section um, is one that I haven't so I'm really quite looking forward to it again and I know that the route has changed a little bit from uh, 30 years ago um, for the better so I'm uh, looking forward to that as well so yeah we're about to cross the M6 soon which means that we'll have done a third of the way So this is the little hamlet of Oddendale that we're passing en route. It's nice to be walking without full waterproofs on. They're firmly in the rucksack today. So yeah, kind of feel almost like you can breathe a bit without the waterproofs on. It's interesting, people often ask me, you know, why do you bother? Why would you bother going out on days like we've had over the previous two and it's been chucking it down with rain? You say, what's the point? You know, what's the point going up these hills? You can't see anything. Uh, but I think when you, for me anyway, when I'm outdoors and walking, it's kind of, you know, not just about what you see. You know, it's a, it is very much about what you hear, smell, you know, the whole atmosphere being outdoors. Now, although, don't get me wrong, it would have been brilliant yesterday to have some lovely views, you know, just being outside, you know, and experiencing that is, there's an odd pleasure in it, if that makes any sense. But, give me the choice though, and I'll take this though any day over the rain we had yesterday. At the moment, we're really enjoying this nice, easy walking, past the... Oh, well, there we go, yeah. Hey, so really Very enjoying easy this. Walking. Very easy walking. Uh, the past are lovely, sort of like a green carpet, apart from that rocker fell over. Uh, and the temperature is great as well, so it's just lovely open spaces. If you're real, yeah, wide expanse of scenery. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really nice section on this.
So we're in the uh, valley of Levinetbeck, um, which apparently is where the Charles II's army drank on their march from Scotland in 1851. Now I've got to say is if they drank that water, I bet, I bet half of them didn't feel very well afterwards. But there's a monument as well just at the top of the valley, um, which we can just see, probably what's the end of the GoPro, um, a, a, a monument at Black Dew that kind of commemorates that very thing. I've just realised that down here um, we passed Robin Hood's grave apparently. Mm, bit weird really. Can't see how that were right. Robin Hood. Thought Robin Hood was from Sherwood Forest. <laughs> I don't know, a bit bizarre anyway. I think somebody must be having a bit of a laugh. Uh, but anyway, this it's kind of still like, like I said, there's that Robin Hood's link, isn't there? Robin Hood chair that we passed, and then Robin Hood his grave. And then we're heading to Robin Hood's Bay. Well I've got another fantastic lunch spot. Got a brew on and peanut butter sandwiches. Yummy, yummy, yummy. This section has all changed from the my previous walk on the coast of coast, uh, which involved quite a lot of road walking around. Um, Orton, in between Orton and some big in town, but now you're on farmer's fields. Uh, which is better, of course it's better for the feet. You've also got nice views as well, looking over here to the Howgills. So yeah, it's uh, much, much more pleasant uh, than the original route. We've just passed through uh, some begin, some begin, if I can say it, some begin. Pass through Sunbiggin um, and we were lured by the Sunbiggin tea shop. Well, Julie was lured and I just sort of <laughs> carried on, I think. Um, but the, the thought of cloudy lemonade and a bit of flapjack was just too much. But it was very nice. It was kind of a nice little oasis and a nice surprise. And it's just got us going for this last stretch now to Kirby Stephen. So we've, uh, we've arrived at the rather picturesque Sunbigin town. Looking very blue, reflecting the sky. We reckon that these sheep that are kicking about here, we reckon they've been some personal adverts because they're definitely whiter than your normal sheep. We're just dropping down now towards Smardale Bridge. Uh, the weather's just clouded over a little bit. But it's still nice views. But I think we're going to stop at Smardale Bridge, have a quick brew before we do the last few miles to uh, Kirby Stephen. Brew is on at Smardale Bridge. So it's quick brew and flapjack. In fact, it's talking of which, it's well in now. So I've got last, um, on the last couple of miles into Kirby Stephen. So I suppose just a bit of a reflection on the day really. I have to say, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a nice day today. I mean, the weather's helped. The weather's been lovely. Uh, but also, you know, it's very sort of undulating, uh, undulating ground, but really nice tracks to walk on. Uh, often you're on a carpet of grass and you've got great, great views all around you, although you never go particularly high. 
uh, you're surrounded by the Lake District Fells uh, and you're moving into the sort of Pennines, North Pennines um, yeah so just a really really pleasant day am I allowed to say pleasant? you are pleasant day <laughs> it was. pleasant day